What's up, people? This is the Nature Girl 30 here, and this is my Hell in the Cell uh, predictions um, audio. And I am not alone this time. I am actually here with the illustrious Mr. Griffin. Say hello, Mr. Griffin. Hey, everybody. <laughs> well, just here to. I will try to give some thoughts on this Hell in the Cell card. Quite frankly, there are going to be little thoughts that I can think of off the top of my head, but to be honest, save the main event, I really don't give a shit about this card. More than likely, if I watch it, it's going to be after the fact. I'm not going to stay up and lose sleep to watch this thing. But, you know, me and Nature Girl 30 are cool, so I said I'd join her for the video to talk about it, so I'll try to be somewhat interesting in this. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'll have plenty to say about the main event later in this video. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to the main event. But first, okay, I want to talk about this first. Uh, the kickoff was something that w that's interesting because it was supposed to be Dean Ambrose versus the Wyatts. Now for the kickoff, we got something totally random. We got Dolph Ziggler, Cesaro, and, and yeah. Adrian Neville yeah. versus yeah. King yeah. Barrett, yeah. Sheamus, yeah. and Rusev. Yeah. Like, like, this is so freaking random. Yeah, it was changed. It was, it was originally supposed to be Dean Ambrose and Randy Orton versus The Wyatt. But at a house show, injured his shoulder. So, Randy actually come up with something creative. They decided to cancel the match and create the the random the random six man. But that's the thing. Who freaking cares? Like, okay, yeah, Randy Orton got hurt. Big deal. So why can't they should have just came up with something completely creative and just made a handicap match? It would have been Dean Ambrose's elements. He always likes going against the grain and going against the odds. So why didn't you just have the two Wyatts up against Dean? It would have made Dean look great. It would have made the Wyatts look great. There would have been some possible good spots. But they put this random of random matches for the kickoff. And I'm like, come on, man. They could have done something more creative than this. I don't even care much about the kickoff. And I don't think a lot of people would care either. But that's just me. What are your thoughts on this thing? People didn't care about it before they changed the match. Well, people didn't care about the kickoff even before they changed the match. And back when some people thought it was BS that Martin and um, Ambrose were even on the kickoff show against the Wyatt. Now, nobody, I think, cares. I agree. And that's the one thing that you don't want to do. You do not want... Your the the WWE universe to stop caring because they are the ones that are literally putting money in your pockets. But anyway, I don't really care much about this random match. But let's get started to one of the matches. Pretty much all these matches are standalone except for three, and three of them are championship matches, and two of them are standalones, and then you got like a six on six, uh, three on three. But Let's get started to one of the standalones, and this is uh, Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns in the Hell in a Cell match. Now, what do you think about this? Because honestly, the build was decent, and then they just kind of fell. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, when you actually get brought out the creepiness of Bray Wyatt. Really, this whole feud. Yeah. Yeah. I guess when I can say that. Out, it actually was pretty good. But then, as the went, time went on, it got dumber and dumber. I think what, what really killed it was the fact that they wouldn't let Bray Wyatt really get creepy. Like they did at the very beginning, especially with the whole Im implication that stalk his family, particularly his daughter, Roman Reigns. Had they had stuck with that, I understand it's PG. But even, and you and me have debated whether... WWE was PG. You say it wasn't. I personally think uh, technically it was PG. But even in that PG era, they did do some risky angles like Jake the Snake and Rick Rude fighting over the fact 
fact that Rick Room wanted to sleep with um, Cheryl Roberts, more or less. Um, Macho Man and Hogan, where there was even domestic violence hinted in the relationship with Savage and Elizabeth. Um, they, did, they did some pretty risque stuff at times. I don't see why they could not have gone there and let Bray Wyatt get creepy. It would have made Bray Wyatt a more over heel, and it would have actually made Roman Reigns look more sympathetic by them not going there. Most people, even though Roman Reigns is the face and Bray Wyatt is the heel, most fans are probably going to be cheering Bray Wyatt. I don't even know. And the sad part is not Roman Reigns' fault. That I agree with you. It's not really his fault how he's booked, but when it comes to Bray Wyatt, I think it's kind of a it's kind of a mixed bag. Not a lot of people really care much for Bray anymore because Bray always talks a good game but never brings it in the end. I mean he scares the crap out of you, but then at the very end he just gets he gets rolled over so quickly and it just you can't take him seriously anymore. And as much as I love Bray and as mysterious as his, uh, as his psychotic heelish character is, I don't know. He needs his win more than Roman. But Roman's a baby face. It seems like he's more than likely going to win this match than Bray would. And it just don't look good for him. Just because he's the baby face. Yeah. Well, it's going to be just because he's the baby face. Not because... We feel sympathetic and we want him to overcome because, quite honestly, he has nothing to overcome. That's because true. At the very beginning, killed anything for him to overcome. And it's, I don't think anybody's going to care except for the kids. They're the only ones that's going to care. The adults really don't care much. But I think that some of the adults yeah, are on the uh, side of, of, of Bray. Sorry, go ahead. Be this generation's mankind or. You know, you know, you know, he reminds me of, he's a cross between Mankind and Jake the Stick Robert. Yeah, minus his sadistic mankind behavior. Mankind in the sense that he be taking stuff incredibly and, and matches, but he, but he has that speaking style and cryptic uh, interview style of a Jake the Snake. But minus the masochistic the behavior though. So bad that Minus the masochistic behavior of mankind, because he would hurt himself even walking in the ring and, and beat himself till he bled and ate his own hair. You know, minus that kind of insanity. I will I, I will agree with you. He does have the, the speaking skills of Jake the Snake. Oh, yeah. And to tell himself, honestly, now, now, well, we'll talk about the main event later. I don't know how Boone don't let Wyatt and Rain be either. I mean, it's freaking hell in the cell during the month of Halloween. They better be brutal. It makes no sense that they don't. And speaking of brutal, this whole feud, this has been the most brutal to watch. And the matches themselves, the, the match itself, even a little snippet that they gave us on Raw, was brutal to watch. And I'm talking about Seth Rollins versus Kane. And if Kane loses then that means that, well, corporate Kane is done. And do I care? As much as I love Kane, I love Kane's character back in the day. He was feared. No one knew who he was. He had a tortured past. He was a great character. But then they freaking neutered him as soon as he became corporate Kane. Now they're trying to bring him back, and it yeah. makes no sense. What are your thoughts on, on Kane in general? Uh, and let me tell you, by doing that and adding that stipulation, they number one, all the guarantee that Seth Rollins is going to retain. And number two, both fans are so sick of Kane now, they'll probably be cheering Seth Rollins to win. I mean, there's rumors about, about um, Glenn Jacobs retiring anyway. So... This could probably be his farewell match. But I can yeah, get, I can get with that. If Kane does this match, I don't see it happening. But if he does, I guarantee he's not going to have to belt very long. No. No, I, I don't see it happening. I don't. And this is just, this is pretty much a farewell match. Just like with Shawn Michaels and his match with Taker. We knew that Shawn Michaels wasn't going to be coming back. 
And just making a stipulation like that, I was like, okay, this is going to be his last match. The same thing with Ric Flair when he faced Shawn Michaels. We knew that Ric Flair wasn't coming back. This is a given. If Kane loses, we know that Glenn Jacobs is going to be in the Hall of Fame this year. That has to happen. I'm sorry, he's going to either be in, in it next year or, or this year. Probably next year with if, if um, uh, with Mark Calloway. He probably... Um, He's going to probably be there with, with, with Taker if Taker actually does retire. But honestly, I don't see him winning. I don't see him actually taking the belt. I don't even see him keeping his job. It's This this thing is done. And it's just, it's a shame that I really wish I would care, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. And Kane was awesome. And speaking of matches that I wish I cared about because how much I love the Divas and how great the Divas Revolution is happening in NXT, I wish I could say the same thing about freaking Raw, and I really can't. One of my favorite Divas, Charlotte, and not because she's uh, the Nature Boy's daughter, it's just because she is spectacular in the ring. But anyway, enough about enough going about Charlotte or or saying good stuff about Charlotte. It's Charlotte versus Nikki Bella for the Divas Championship. Boy, do I care? No. I wish I did, but I don't. Oh, oh man. What do you, what do you think about this match? I could give two shits left. <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's sad because Charlotte, as you mentioned, is a great performer. She doesn't need the le I mean, we know she's Ric Flair's daughter, but honestly, she doesn't need the legacy. She does not need the legacy to get over. She can get over on her own. As for Nikki Bella, her or not, um, like her or not, she has improved tremendously. And honestly, right now, she actually is sounding more like the champion now that she did when she actually had the belt. I mean, fans may 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 hate her, but they love to hate her. This, in a way, some people might say, well, she's getting that Cena hate, but I'm like, no, no she's not. Mm -mm. In the case of Nikki Bella, I think more fans love, love to hate Nikki Bella. In the case of John's, her boyfriend, oh, see, Cena, they look Cena. I think Nikki Bella is more that they love to hate her. But it's a shame that how WWE treats its women on the main roster right now. Because there's so much more they could be doing. That's true. Right now. That's Way true. Way so much more. That's true. And, and, and that fact, I'm going to go retaining, but it would not shock me if they put the belt back on Nikki Bella. Nah. It's and then perhaps, maybe not right away, because rumor is, rumor is, um, there is an interest, you and I have debated this before, there is some interest in higher ups because it's not every match with the Divas, especially in the last month or so, what have we heard? Honestly, I haven't really heard any, like, as much as I love Charlotte, I keep hearing, like, we want Sasha. Every time there's a Divas match, there we, go. we want Sasha. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I was referring to it. Did you get that? But for the last, especially the last month or so, we have all we've heard every Diva match, especially one Nikki Bella, we have heard we want Sasha. Right now, Sasha, right now, and it's mostly because of her matches with uh, Bailey at both NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and NXT TakeOver Respect. Right now, Sasha Banks, is there a, whether they admit it or not, after Nikki Bella, and you can argue to a degree, Paige, her hottest diva is Sasha Banks right now. Yeah. One rumor I've heard is that they might put the belt back on Nikki Bella, and eventually, not right away, but eventually, have her face, an edgy face version of Sasha Banks at either the Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. Because there is some interest in turning her face. No. I personally would not want to see that unless they let her keep her edge. If they let her keep 
the way she is going to face, then I'd be okay with it. But if they try to turn her into, let's say, Billy type baby face, that does not work. No. So, no. no. They can't turn her into Bailey. No. I'm sorry. That does not work. Even in the storylines, that's proven that does not work. If they let her stay heelish, but, but she happens to be fighting up her heels, I'd say don't change her at all. Uh, give me a tag team example, and then we'll get back on Charlotte and Nikki. Give me a tag team example. The Road Warriors. The Road Warriors, if you really look at from the time they started to the time their team was finished, then, of course, that same year, Hawk died, 2003. If you look at their time together as a tag team, did not change their style at all. They wrestled like aggressive heels, but fans cheered them anyway. Mostly because, A, they respected that. B, they were heels, but you rarely saw them cheat. They usually won honorably. C, usually they would fight anybody, face or heel, and usually they were fighting over heels. So, most fans cheered them. I think you could do that with Sasha Banks. Where you don't need to turn her baby face. Fans are already cheering her now as a heel. Um, I'll give you a better example. Steve Austin. Oh, gosh. From the time he was a heel versus Bret Hart until the end of his career, where he more or less turned babyface, other than that brief period with the invasion angle, did he really change his style that whole time? Kinda. A little bit, but not really. He didn't really change his style that whole time. He wrestled more like a heel. Just about the entire time. True. And of course, there was that brief period in the invasion where he was the cowardly heel. But most of the time, he wrestled as the heel. But fans cheered him. Like I said, Sasha Banks, I don't think you need to change her into the goody good baby face. You don't have to. Leave her as she is, but put her against other heels. And most fans will cheer her. Fans will still cheer her. Especially if it's Vicky Bella. Oh, like, yeah. Imagine if you took the Sasha Banks we saw against Bailey versus Vicky Bella. Yeah, that wouldn't last. Ooh. That would you be a brutal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, uh, she, she would she would literally destroy her. Okay, when it comes to Charlotte and Nikki. The only person I can actually like cleanly win that I can that I, I can see who can cleanly win by far is is Charlotte. Now, don't get me wrong, Nikki Bella is, is leaps and bounds better than ha how she used to be. She is more strength. She's more strength. She's more dominant. And I mean, and you can kind of tell she you, she's a bit of Cena. Like she has a bit of Cena in her that you can kind of tell. When she actually performs, no pun intended. But anyway, um, I can actually see Charlotte winning because Charlotte. Well, <laughs> I, I can actually see Charlotte winning because, well, Charlotte has a mixed style between gymnastics and wrestling. She's very flexible, very stealthy, and she knows a lot of submission holds. While Nikki don't use any, so I don't really see her winning. But it just seems like. This may be something that Nikki's going to probably take. I hope not because that guy brings some worth to that Divas belt. To that ridiculous butterfly belt that I wish would go away. But I don't know. Who do you think will win? I'm going to go with Charlotte. But I won't be shocked if Nikki Bella wins. Mm. And like I said, I keep hearing rumors that they might put it back on Nikki. To, to eventually have her feud with Sasha. But we'll see. I mean, but because you could still do Sasha versus Charlotte, and it'll still but be I awesome. Do no. I mean, can you imagine Sasha yeah, Banks I versus do Charlotte it right now? Though, if they have Charlotte retain the belt, and let's say they do a Charlotte versus Sasha thing, I wouldn't do it right away. Why not? Soon, I would, because that hasn't been that long ago since they 
stuff in NXT, I would win at least Royal Rumble. I don't know. Because you still have the whole thing with Charlotte and Paige. Which is falling flat very quickly. It is to the point now that Paige is not even yeah, in if existence. They have to decide Paige is is a heel or Paige is still with Charlotte and Becky Lynch. I don't know what they're doing. They can't make up their mind. They still have these ridiculous teams. You rarely see Paige in action at all as a heel. And I'm like, okay, she's a heel. Now what? She's not going up against her friends. She's not ruining any of their matches. You barely see her on the screen. And she doesn't even have a match against her. So what are you what are you planning on doing? Why make her heal when you're not going to do anything with her? Yeah, and then they wonder why. And then you wonder why your ratings are in the toilet. Seriously. it's Their ratings are bad. And it's not going to get any better as long. I mean, if they, if they keep it up like this. There's no... I mean, so, and from what I've heard, I don't want to get into this because you and I have been on tangents about this before. But from what I understand, the writers actually come up with some good stuff. But what happens is Vince McMahon gets a hold of and then rewrites a lot of this stuff sometimes at last minute before the show. Well, that does sound like him. That definitely does, but I, I, I don't know. why. The fact that they're allowing him to do this is something that just blows my freaking mind. You would think the board of directors would step in by now, but hey, whatever. I'm hoping that they at least attempt to allow some sort of change, because this is, this is getting old. But speaking of old, we have seen these guys battle more than once. We've even seen some clean matches from these guys. And it's to the point where the feud was so hyped up, but then it just started falling flat real quick. And I'm talking about the New Day versus uh, the Dudley Boys for the tag team titles. I don't care. As entertaining as the New Day have been for the past few months for me, they have made my raw. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I hate their gimmick. I hate the stereotype that they're put under, but good grief, these guys are entertaining, especially Xavier Woods with the trombone. He makes my raw every single night. But now you're bringing the Dudley boys, and I guess you're trying to, to hype everything up or bring them over. I don't know what they're trying to do by bringing them back, but it fell so flat, I don't care. You don't have matches with these guys and then have the New Day beat you, not once, but twice. How are we supposed to care on this pay-per-view if we see two clean wins? It makes no sense. Not to mention, not to mention, this match is just a regular tag match. And I'm like, there should be a stipulation on this match. Like, a no holds barred match or a Texas Tornado or... A and no free bird no rule. Tables match. Something. Shoot, it should be a hell in a cell well, match. Because Xavier Woods supposedly is out. He's hurt? Yep. Just a straight up regular tag when it should be. Huh? Xavier Woods is hurt? Not in real life, but. Oh. K Fade. They're doing a regular tag when it should be a stipulation match at this point. I mean, and, like you said, plus the fact they keep giving it away more or less on television. Why should I bother to watch it on the network? True. I mean, it's like you had two clean wins from the New Day over the Dudleys on Raw. So why the heck would we even care to watch it in Hell in a Cell if it's just going to be a clean win with the New Day? I'm like, man... I mean, number one, if they had like some kind of interruption or something or somebody got called out or disqualified, fine. Fine. Bring in a little bit of the mystery, a little bit of the intrigue. Don't give it away so quickly. And it's to the point where no one even cares anymore. But I'm not going to lie, the New Day are hot as heels. But 
no, not against the Dudleys, not against the freaking Legends, which are Dudleys. You gotta make them look good too. And I know that the Legends' job is to put the new, the the um, the fresh meat over, but you gotta make the Legends look good too. This is making them look weak, and we know they're not weak. This is those clean wins made them look weak. It was bad. But I don't know. I, I could care less who wins. But something's telling me the New Day's gonna gonna keep their belts. What do you think? More than likely, I'll be surprised if the Dudleys win. And if they do, I wonder what they're gonna do oh, with those oh, belts. Yeah. Uh, but uh, moving on to the next match, this is one another championship match, and I think we just talked about. The, we talked the last two. This, I think this is the next to the last championship match. Um, the IC match with um, with uh, Kevin Owens versus Ryback. Uh, why? <laughs> that That's all I have to say is just why. What in the world? Well, they have to do a rematch because Ryback and Kevin Owens have faced off for the title since Night of Champions. So this one I actually don't have as much with, although the feud has not been very good. Oh gosh, the feud sucked. The feud sucked so I bad. Prediction. Yeah, Owen should retain the belt. Let me say that right now. Yeah, I'm with you there. Because Ryback was the worst IC champion ever. He did make the belt interesting. He did make the belt... And that, and that wasn't really Ryback's fault, but they... They kept putting them with the same opponents. They kept putting them with Biz. They kept putting them with Big Show. When no one gives a fuck about neither one of them, especially Big Show. Well, I mean, it's it's not only that. It's just the it's the fact, and not really so much of him being a fighting champion. He was injured half the doggone time. Like shoot, ha he was he's like the Trish Stratus of IC belt holders, and Trish Stratus half the time she was injured too. And barely defending her title because she was I injured. Like Ryback. Ryback can get a splinter in his thumb and he'll be gone for six months. That's what that's the one that pisses me off about Ryback. He is such a featherweight. He's a big dude, but he's a freaking featherweight. The that's smallest of mean. injuries can get him because knocked out for six months. So actually, I think a better a better comparison would be he got he gets injured like Ahmed Johnson or he got injured like Candace. Yeah. <laughs> Those were people that got frequently injured. Yeah, I, I guess I can't really say Trish Stratus because Trish Stratus has some legit injuries. She has some legit injuries of why she'd be out. Whether she, you know, she she tore or she messed up her knee, uh, or 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 busted her shoulder or something like that. You know, I understand those injuries. But with Ryback, he can get a splinter in his thumb and be gone for six months. And I'm like, gosh, a dude that big being such a featherweight, why the heck would you put a title on him? He would barely be able to defend it because he'll be gone half the time. And he just made the title so boring. And then he, he literally had to cheat his way to win. He was so he had desperate win after desperate win after desperate win. He didn't really seem like a fighting champion. He made the title boring. I mean, come on. The only person that I know besides Kevin Owens that actually had made that belt interesting again was Cody Rhodes. But where I don't think we're gonna see Cody Rhodes ever get that belt again. But regardless, it should be on Kevin Owens. He will make it more interesting, especially as a heel. All right, I know. I guess moving on to this dude, I know. Yeah, I agree. yeah I, you're not gonna like. I know you don't like this guy, but we gotta talk about him, especially the fact he don't have an opponent. John Cena's U.S. Open challenge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suck that man, but yeah, I don't really 
you are a lot more docile than a lot of Cena haters out there but the but oh, God. the fact that they're actually having a US champ a US challenge a US open challenge they're having it at hell in the cell I am like what what you're doing this on a pay-per-view this is a raw thing why are you doing this here you should be defending it against somebody. And I know somebody wants it because there's a lot of newbies back there that never had a belt before. I've heard some names thrown around. Like what? I've heard some names thrown around too. I've heard, I've heard Dolph Ziggler. Mm -hmm. I've heard uh, Tyler Breeze. Mm -hmm. I've heard of... Uh, I've heard of Daniel Bryan thrown around, although that was unlikely. Very much so. A lot of people are saying Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that thing. Actually. Yeah, I've heard Samoa Joe. Um, Tyler Breeze, that would be interesting. Baron Corbin. I actually would be interested to see Baron Corbin out there. But... <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean that, that would be interesting in itself to actually see Baron Corbin go out there and actually take the U.S. title. It would also be more interesting if they allowed James Storm to do it, but James Storm just got there, so I doubt that. I would love one of the VOD villains to do it, but no, nah, they're a tag team, so probably, probably not. And they would have to change their gimmick going to the main roster, so I'm kind of happy it wouldn't be them. But yeah, I can't think of anybody else. By the or sh shouldn't they like make this some kind of an extreme match? Instead of just being a random open challenge, be a random open challenge in a steel cage or something. Make it interesting. Make it worth something. But I hope it's not Dolph because Dolph is in enough issues with the entire Lana storyline completely crumbling. The whole girlfriend thing completely crumbling. <laughs> And the fact that they had to end it with Summer Rae and Rusev in the ring was awkward. So, I doubt it would be him. I don't know. Have you heard the other names being thrown around? No. Uh, this is one match that I wish I cared about because it's the U.S. title and it's very prestigious with a lot of people that held it. But I do not care. They should have had an opponent before this pay-per-view ever happened. But, unfortunately, they didn't. But now, guys, it is time to move on to the main event. The main event that's supposed to be a WrestleMania 31, but was not for some strange reason. Um, we This is The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in the Hell in a Cell match. And this is supposed to be the last. Supposed to be the last. We've been mistaken before. But, Irvin, I know you have been waiting to talk about this main event. Let her rip, man. What do you think about it? <laughs> yeah, only thing I, I'll be honest, I don't really care who wins this match. Well, I do care. I don't care. I don't quite play for it. But if Brock wins, it's not going to bother me. However, if you do this match, it's got to be a clean finish, in my opinion. If this is Rick and really going to be the last time these two touch each other, it's got to be a clean finish. Okay, so you... No SummerSlam finish. So you're, you're rooting for Taker? And, and let me say this on the SummerSlam match. Except for that ending where Taker won, that was actually a good... In many ways, it was... Should have got it WrestleMania 30. This hell of a sale has to be a clean finish, in my opinion. There cannot be any finish here. I suppose be a clean finish. I suppose you have a point. I mean, but I, I suppose you have a point. And I, yeah, if it actually, if this actually did happen to WrestleMania 30, and it had the, a different kind of win with the low blow, then maybe it'll probably cushion the blow. But honestly, for me, I am rooting for Brock all the way. You know why? I mean, besides the fact that I like Brock Lesnar, it's the fact that I just want 
this thing to end. I don't want Taker to have the upper hand because I'll leave things open. I want this book to be closed. The only way it can be completely closed is if Brock Lesnar actually does win. I really don't want Taker to win. As much as I love Taker, I just don't want him to win. I hope it is Brock. And I hope it's completely clean. And I hope it's done and finished and over with. Because honestly, when it, when it was a clean win at WrestleMania 30, no matter how much people hated it, it had a, it had a lot more to it. Like, a lot of people, it hit a lot of people hard when that happened. And it had a lot more worth to it, just like how when Kevin Owens beat Cena clean, that had a lot more worth to it. So this has to be a clean finish, and I'm hoping it's Brock, because I want this thing to die. I don't want it to ever resurface. I don't want Taker versus Brock Part 3. I want it to be done. Because if Taker wins, it's going to continue. And I don't want it open. I want it done. That's just me. Do you have any closing thoughts about this pay-per-view? Well, uh, overall, I really don't care. Save the main event. And, yeah, this, like I said, the main event has to be a clean pick Because you've had, you've had two matches. The reason I prefer Undertaker to win because you had the WrestleMania 30 match. He lost the streak. Then he had the match at SummerSlam where he won, but he won in controversial fashion. Because he actually tapped out the Brock Lesnar's Kimura, but the referee didn't see the tap out. He, the, the timekeeper and everyone else did. So Brock thought he won. Undertaker hits him with a low blow, which my um, host says that was so low for the Undertaker. Me, personally, as a man, I'd be like, okay, anyone else? I would say, yes, that was a cheap shot. Against Brock Lesnar? Oh, no. Huh? You get a win over his big ass any way you can. In my case, I'd be like, yeah, it's low blow. And I did enjoy, as he was choking about with the Hell's Gate, Brock, instead of tapping out, Brock just gave him the bird as he passed out. I, I have to admit, I did laugh my ass off at that. <laughs> I was like, oh, just the pure defiance. But yeah, the reason I say if it's Undertaker, it's got to be a totally clean win. Because you can't have him win controversially again. He already lost the streak, and the last match that he won, he technically shouldn't have So this time around has to be a clean finish. Although, if you look at it realistically, even though Brock is portrayed as the heel and Undertaker the face, it's really Brock that's the face. And Undertaker is really the heel. If you think about it, yeah. That is true. But Taker is so beloved so, that they're Undertaker, not going to boo him. If Undertaker wins, it has to be a totally clean finish. Brock Lesnar, I would accept a somewhat dirty finish from him in this case. I mean, Captain SummerSlam, <laughs> this man, The Undertaker, has hit him in the nuts three times, literally. The first time, Battleground. That's true. The second true. time, the week, the week of SummerSlam, when he attacked him in uh, Minnesota. The third time at SummerSlam itself, to which I would be like, I'd be like, uh, Brock, if you know The Undertaker is in the building, my advice to you, wear a cup. <laughs> wear something down there for protection, because it's obvious <laughs> this, this man is intent on making sure you and Sable have no more children. <laughs> when you said SummerSlam, that I kept thinking about enjoy Cena. Enjoy the pleasure of a woman ever again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you had <laughs> to go there. 
The only thing you can do with it is pee. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you really had to go there. Oh Somebody my gosh. Say, Suffice to say, if a man, now if he did it once, I might not think about it. But after the second time, I'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> no, I, oh, the third time, I'm going to have something for him. <laughs> I'm going to have an adamantium cup or something down there. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. That really would be funny if he actually did give him a there, kick. To where if he threw a punch, decided the field going to be there again, his arm or his foot going to be broke. Like China's forearm was broke after um when she tried to low blow a guy, he pulled out like a uh, like a like a um a, a cup like made of metal or something. <laughs> I remember that. She broke her forearm. Yes. I can't remember who it was, but she broke her forearm, and he pulled out like a cup that looked like it was made of like a chrome or something, and it was hilarious. That was so funny, but, but, as for I mean, as for this pay per view, it's a shame that they're actually depending on one match to hold the entire pay per view up. They should have had a better build when it comes to some of these feuds instead of making it completely random. When it comes to the kickoff match, it shouldn't have made it that random six-man tag trying to get all the all the the second-string rejects in there. And I hate to say that about uh, about my boy Wade Barrett, but they've literally made him into a second-string reject. I, I don't care if he has a crown on him or not. They made him into a reject. And having that random match made no sense. It would have made more sense with um, Dean Ambrose versus... Um, the Wyatt family and just had a, a handicap match in Hell in a Cell. It would have made sense. But hey, sometimes things that make sense don't make sense to them. And when it don't make sense to them, it's just flat out stupid when you see it on screen. But I really wish I would care much about this pay-per-view. As you can hear, Irvin and I are actually making jokes of other things to try to liven up this thing. But... It just seems like this is going to be a pay-per-view that's going to be like mediocre at, at best. But I'm hoping that I'm wrong. I'm hoping that things will change. Yeah. But right now, I don't know. You have any other thoughts before we close out? None. None <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, let's this see. This is going to be, except for one or two matches, this is going to be a crappy pay-per-view. And if Brock Lesnar just happens to come across this video... My man, you better either learn some defense with your never regions or or you better toughen up that area down there. I don't know how you do it. I don't know if you have to take some old Chinese remedy meditation. Oh my gosh. To have the pain, I don't know, but it's obvious the undertaker's trying to make sure you don't produce any more Brock Lesters. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I had a good feeling that you would talk about that, but 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 honestly guys, we are doing our best to try to seem interested in this pay per view, it, but it seems like it's gonna fall flat. If anything, if I was in Brock Lesnar's shoes, I'd make sure I'd make sure the old dirty I think Undertaker's gotta be pushed eighty. I mean, the man, the man is Asian. <laughs> His body is definitely... Course, I wouldn't say Brock should hit him down there, but if Brock, <laughs> if Brock did that to him, he'd probably turn the dog. And he's probably barely any... Oh. It's <laughs> probably barely anything... Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Well, folks, we're at the 50 minute mark. There's really nothing more to say about this except for laughing about uh, Undertaker's junk turning to dust. <laughs> That's pretty much all we can laugh about here. But, guys, this has been Mr. Griffin. Thank you for joining me at this, uh, at this audio. And I am the Nature Girl 30, guys. Peace out. I will see you later.